on record. Right. So our objective today is basically uh, to get acquainted with one another, who is Paraclet, and uh, what do we offer? What does the future hold in project management? How can project management transform your career and give you a leap in life? What are the trends in the world, industry, that we need to understand as project professionals or aspiring practitioners? Then we explore the certifications in project management. Which ones should I go for? Which ones are important? How is the PMP relevant vis-a-vis -vis other certifications offered in project management? Is PMI the sole certification provider for project management in the world? We can as well have all of this. What is the strength of each of these certifications? Those are the kind of questions we like to discuss on today. But before going straight into all of this stuff, it's imperative we have each and everyone express ourselves properly on whether what you do connects to project management or you are rather doing uh, uh, whether it has you do operational work or you do project work or you're a project manager, a veteran or you are entry-level project manager, or you are a mid-career project manager, or whatever level you are, just tell us and share with us your dreams with the project management course or the BMP course. All right, so this is who I am. This is what I do. I am a project consultant, full stop. And I'm a licensed trainer. That is it. So may we hear from, uh, yeah, Madame Mabel, Madame Corinne, Bam, uh, who else? Please kindly introduce yourself and let's see how we can ride on. Share with us your expectations. Is that possible to go? Yes, I can start. Great. Yes. I'm called Brenda Musuru. And uh, I'm actually in the field of project management, working as a strategic project manager in the development field. So I've been handling development projects for a number of years now. And my objective of doing this course is to get to a place where I'm really confident that I can um, manage these projects at a professional level and also to expand my scope. You know, project management is not just limited to development projects. There are many other projects, so I want to um, get to the point where I can be confident enough to manage even other projects. Great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Madam Brenda. We appreciate your input, your insights, and your vision. Great. Could we hear from some other person? All right, Madam Giselle. Okay, maybe they are not very set to present now. Okay, probably we'll go straight. Excuse me. We'll go straight into presentation. Uh. All right, do we have Frederick? Uh, hello, Madam Maureen, are you there? Is Mr. Frederick to be in this class or in the French class, just to be sure? 
let him not miss a link and jump into the English class, please. Thank you. All right. Let's go on. I would like to still hear from each and every one of us because it is a discussion, it's an interaction, it's a question and answer, it's a presentation, basically. And so we should be able to, uh, in a few minutes, maximize the opportunity to hear ourselves and, uh, you know, share what experiences we have with the profession and developing the roadmap to getting certified in any of these certifications that we offer here. So then, like I said, our first part of entry would be to bring the industry awareness, what is happening in the world today, um, within organizations, industries, governments, programs, are all targeted to projects, you see? So um, Madame Brenda quite explained where she is practicing, as a development project manager or consultant, and uh, seeing the need to upskill to the confidence level that would give her the leverage over every other thing concerned with projects, whether it's uh, development or non-developmental projects and so forth. Yes. Um, we have just much to share and uh, it's imperative that we are open to ask our questions, get clarified so that the scope of presentation should meet exactly your needs. Because if we were to present about project management from morning to night, <laughs> we'll say a lot of things that are very important, of course. Uh, but uh, let us hear what really is your key need or concern. So then the project economy is the value driver now and the transformation uh, that we are facing, what is happening in the world, people are turning to project management talents to build solutions, get results, and develop strategy that a winning strategy that will get them across. You know, time is changing so fast, things are moving so fast, industry. Things are changing so fast. Technology is impacting so much. People talk about AI, robots, and so forth, machines. Yeah, all of these are driving forces of transformation. But then, what really is behind transformation is about value creation, value realization. It's not just that things are changing. Things are changing, giving us new perspectives on how to do, do business or do work or carry out work. And so the project economy is here to, is the phenomenon coined by the, uh, I mean, terminology coined by the Project Management Institute to describe this industry phenomenon right now, where people, organizations, individuals, governments are geared towards acquiring those skills, talents, and capabilities that will help them turn ideas into reality and create values, uh, value streams. See? So... If you really explore deeply on the importance of project management uh, today, uh, you really have a, I mean, a take home, a heavy take home, uh, because project management will play a relevant, uh, will pl play a relevant role within individual and organizational um, expectations. So, if you are an individual, getting project management means you are sharpening, honing the right skills and mindsets to, 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 to move seamlessly from project to project in order to help your organizations deliver strategic outcomes. For organizations, this means delivering value to stakeholders through successful completion of projects, delivery of uh, products, and alignment to value streams. We see that all these initiatives deliver financial as well as societal value. All these is telling us that in a summary, project management is relevant for both personal and professional success or productivity. The project economy is a description of what backs most of the important work 
that is being carried out around the world. Organizations are constantly looking for the best way to transform strategy and get things and get results. So if you can follow this little video, you get a lot of information. As we adapt to new ways of working and prepare for future disruption, organizations will see a growing need for skilled project managers. The PMI 2022 jobs report showcases emerging sectors and trending industries where project leaders can find opportunities to drive growth and innovation in every region of the globe. Countries in the Asia Pacific region expect their economies to grow in 2022. Meanwhile, talent is in high demand in many countries and industries. While China's economy has experienced a slight slowdown, a number of factors should contribute to increased project activity, including consumer spending increases and China's energy transition plan. Supply chain disruption and rising energy prices, along with rapid digitalization, are driving an increased demand for project professionals in Europe, especially in IT. The current conflict in the region will have long-term humanitarian and economic consequences that will require response. There has been a spike in demand throughout Latin America for project managers, particularly in the technology and manufacturing sectors. Rebounding oil pricing, government investment in high-profile megaprojects, and international events like Expo 2020 Dubai and the 2022 FIFA World Cup promise to reinvigorate the region's economy and need for project managers. The Great Resignation and supply chain problems have put job seekers in high demand in the US and Canada as companies look toward automation and digitization to protect against future disruption. Despite the pandemic, the global demand for products manufactured in South Asia has continued to increase over the past two years. As a result, companies are willing to invest more in project managers with strong innovation and leadership skills. Nearly a third of global aid, roughly $32 billion, is spent in Africa, and that's fueling new development jobs across the region, up to 45% of which will need project talent. The demand for project talent is high around the world. Are you ready to take your career to the next level? All right. Is that is that nice? Is that good? What do you think the project economy has? Uh, the project economy is a global phenomenon in every industry of what? So no matter where you are in this world. Yeah, I'm going to go now. Are you looking for you? Well, something is connecting and it's making noise there. Please kindly put yourself on mute to minimize interruptions. Okay. So, like I said, no matter what you do or where you are in this great world, the core principles that we're going to get in project management, acquiring them will be a lifetime. Uh, it will lead to lifetime success in every endeavor. You know, the definition of a project is basically the undertaking, the effort to, to uh, turn ideas to get results within the time boundaries. You see, a temporary undertaking to create a unique product service or result. So that's a project. A project must be time bound. A project is different from operations. So there are different types of work, but classified in two, you have projects and you have operations work. So project work is time-bound initiatives. That's what makes it strategic. 
and um, operations work is not really time bound, but it's repetitive kind of work. Over and over, all is that is still shaping out product service and results and creating value to stakeholders. Okay, so in summary, the project economy is one in which people are looking for the skills and capabilities they will need to transform, get ideas into reality. Okay. Looking at how we will position ourselves, we need um, kind of skills that every project manager must have to be able to demonstrate capability, performance, and getting results. So your fulfillment to any task is based on how much of these skills you have, your talent capability. So what we call the PMI talent triangle, it carries the three concentric capabilities that every project manager should develop to. And of course, he has capability maturity models to measure the different levels of maturity for individuals and also for organizations. Organizations can be so mature in project practice as well as some individuals may be very, very mature and expert in project delivery. So this is where we measure them. So now the technical project manager skills are those skills that um, tell how much the person knows how to transform processes, methodologies, and tailor them to get results. You see? So his, the leadership skills point to the people aspects, interpersonal skills, influencing skills, negotiation skills, problem solving, you know? So many kind of things that a leadership plays in projects. So it takes a strong dimension in project practice or talent. Now you have strategic business and management or strategic and business management skills. These are skills that give you an understanding of um, your organization vis-a-vis -vis the project that you're carrying out within the organization, how the organization, how that project is linked to the organizational mission and uh, the relationship that the project has in terms of meeting value change for the organization or value, uh, uh, value options, value realization. So let's push forward. The world is changing. And so we say the future is coming. All is that these talents are seen in a better way more and more as we look into the future. So the talent triangle has transformed from that basic understanding to a more, you know, a more enhanced understanding. So the technical project management is now seen better as ways of working because there are hundreds and thousands of ways of working. And so we should be able to see that methodologies, life cycles, development approaches carry a way, a fundamental way to develop a philosophy of working. And that fits our context. So not all projects, not all, uh, let's say, not there's no one formula fits all or methodology that fits all projects. So we should be able to tell them. Now, ways of working, great. Power skills will now replace what we call leadership. So power skills. Business acumen is basically what we're looking at. So um, in summary, we say that the project economy is a relevant subject, a relevant subject in the world today of practice. And uh, 
we need to know that pointing to the future, we will not by any means sacrifice these skills for anything else. Even machines will not be able to perform these particular skills. Well, machines can take care of processes, can run processes. But when it comes to people, strategy, and whatever it is, leave that to people and individuals. So the team or people skills will count relevant. People will always be behind projects. So that's to say that AIs and robots will never replace project management. In the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years, project management will still remain a people-centric management discipline. Okay. Any question with that, please? We'll get introduced to PMI. Many of us know what PMI stands for, the Project Management Institute, founded in 1969, delivering value to project practitioners and the profession. They are the ones that have shaped the profession of project management to date uh, through project program portfolio management best practices. They've laid a lot of resources, templates, methodologies, tools, and uh, professional networking platforms and opportunities to help everyone, governments, individuals, communities of practices, so forth, so they can be able to get what it takes for them to do project management the best way. So Project Management Institute is a not-for-profit membership, professional membership association founded in 1969, based in the USA, <clears throat> with global footprints in almost every country in the world, have certified practitioners, they have chapter members or membership, and the chapter's mission is basically to promote project management awareness, that's all, and also create networking opportunities, that's all. Then PMI has authorized training partners around the world who are education providers to train and PMI license these organizations and the individuals to be able to offer the best quality or the highest standards of project management delivery that we can have in the industry. So that's why you see these badges. These badges can only be associated with an organization that is licensed as authorized training partner of the Project Management Institute. So Paraclet is one. And um, we used to have some two or three in the country. Somehow, it's um, it's not easy to maintain the title. That is it. It's not easy to maintain such a license. That's that's the point. So we are left to see what is the relevance of the certifications: PMP, CAPM. Program management, portfolio management, agile certified practitioner, risk management, scheduling professional, business analysis profession. These are the foundational, some of the foundational certifications that we can discuss deeply to see, to have an overview of them and uh, see how they can shape our future as practitioners. Okay. So licensed organizations have all it takes, licensed content, licensed instructors, approved curriculum and approved training courses. So we offer a training on three premises. The first promise is not just getting people get certified. You come to Paraclet, it's not all about certification, even though certification is at the back end, at the backdrop of our objective. But then the number one push of Paraclet for you will be to become a real project manager, okay? Give you all it takes. Through the training, we should be able to 
the confidence that you have what it takes to be to lead a project if if you were assigned over a project of 20 billion dollars with thousands of people all over the world to lead with different languages and cultures and you no know, time zones you can now begin to think this is more than my capacity <laughs> there even though somebody could be certified but he's still threatened you know we want to eliminate that kind of thing so our first objective is to make sure you learn and see yourself at the front seats of discussions and practice of project management number two we have to make sure that we elevate I hope it's the right word, elevate the standards and the relevance of project management. How you see project management. Do you see project management as your profession or as a complement to your profession or a tool? So whichever way you see it, we know we can tell you so many things that are happening and how you can navigate um you know your career the different industries what you can do more with the project management in fact some people have a certification they don't know what to do with the certification that's the thing so understanding what you can do can be interesting by maybe case success stories and whatever it is yeah coming on to pmi itself or signing up to be a pmi student through paraclet already begins for you, opens doors for a lifelong professional growth opportunities that, you know, you can do much more, you can do much more than you thought. That is it. Number three, certification readiness. The endorsement, to, I mean, the drive to getting certified, oh, to be among the elite class, to see yourself uh, with such global recognition credentials, great. We facilitate that with ABC approach, okay? So we have all it takes, the tools, the learning elements, assessment elements, the standards, the most updated curriculum, the most updated licensed instructors are the ones that are in class to be sure you have to grab what it takes to take the exam, not by trial. You know, people kind of like write something and say, oh, well, let me just try if I, if I don't make it next time. Well, I think we can eliminate it. Eh? We can eliminate totally this uh, trial thing. You're going in already certified inside you. You have 100% certified confidence, confidence level. <laughs> you understand so you're not going to try it except something is wrong i mean except grossly something is wrong somewhere but we know the proof the due diligence the process you go through to getting to attempting the exam to taking the exam is actually i don't say attempting the exam as though you want to go and let it go so in this third part here objective we give you all the thorough readiness for the exam Exam day is a joyful day, not a sad day, not a sad moment. I tell people, if you don't pass the PMP exam, you were not a project manager. Of course, you should have been one before ever attempting because it is a certification designed by practitioners and leaders for practitioners and leaders. So passing the PMP is not a try, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a project. So we manage it the right way, you get it. So you start seeing why and how to make it, to make success without failure. Strike once. <laughs> Lots of people like striking twice <laughs> before their eyes are open. All right, anyway, just kidding. And also telling us there's form, but there's reality. So what does it constitute? as success for our initiatives that we take to carry out as projects. How do you define project success? How is success measured? 
who is accountable for success? How do you ensure success happens? These are very important questions to everybody. How can I manage a project and be sure uh, it will deliver? Of course, there are risk aspects. There are so many things to manage in the project, many constraints, uh, time, quality, risk, resources, putting people, the right people on time, the capabilities and the availability and non-availability, all of those factors, procurement, how you acquire people and goods and resources from outside the project organization and so forth. All that, how you manage stakeholders. But there is a blueprint to success. And so we can discuss that in another very big uh, workshop session or seminar. Introducing, well, let's go to the certifications discussion. PMI has certifications for everybody at entry level. Please, can you still get me to be sure? Yes, we are getting you. Okay, thank you very much. We need feedback. Okay. PMI certification framework shows that there is certification for everybody at every level. If you are old, you are 60, you are a veteran, well, you're never old to get project management knowledge. There's still something to add value and tell you how much more you can do. People like going on retirement, uh, going and sitting on the rocky chair. <laughs> but we we'll tell them that there's something you can do. Start having more strategic thinking when you are crossing 40 to 50, you, you could have been more operational oriented, of course, less than 40 years. Being the operational work capacity is good. But when you are beyond 40, start thinking of adding those certifications that move you from operational to tactical and strategic. Yes, because you need to now work with teams, with people and systems and coordinate systems and make system-wide approaches. Yeah, so with that now, with a little uh, endorsement, you can see a global chain of reactions taking place. So that is strategic. So, but there are certifications for entry level zero years. No background in project management, come on. We have you covered, PMI project management ready. Then CAPM follows. And then from three years, there are some certifications that you can attend, like Discipline Agile Scrum Master and Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master. But then it matters the context to even try this Discipline Agile Senior Scrum Master. Hmm. You must have three years plus anyway. It's actually three years plus. So now three years plus, you have the PMP, PBA, Discipline Agile Value Stream Consultant, Discipline Agile Coach. All these are powerful certifications. You have them, you are, I mean, you will not want to live in one place, you know. Specializations, risk management, scheduling professional, agile hybrid pro, and some micro credentials even. Yeah. ADS plus of experience, we have you covered, like I said, come on board to get program management professional certification and or portfolio management professional and or PMO and so many others. All right. Um, discussing about the associates, certified associate in project management, CABM, is one of the lofty um, inspiring certification that it cuts across. Everybody can take it. Entry level to professional or whatever level practitioner, you can take the CAPM. CAPM is suitable for students, suitable for mid-career, entry level, mid-career, advanced practitioners. People want to upskill, take, you know, their skills to another level. So having your CAPM shows understanding of mastery of uh, knowledge, 
domains, processes, terminologies needed for effective project performance. Less waste of time and resources. You see, you, you optimize value by reducing waste and know how to plan things on a timely release and also appropriate the right set resources. Understanding risks and opportunity and how to benchmark them and mitigate them. Globally, the CAPM is recognized in every nation and opens wide doors of opportunities in project management for any earning. So earning the CAPM means automatically you are building the foundation of 35 hours for getting the PMP. Who is a CAPM suited for? Career beginners. That's entry level, guys. Then those who are career changers, kind of like want to transform from one industry to another, CAPM will suit you. Upskillers, people within the same industry who want to move up higher in knowledge. So entry level associate into the market. CAPM exam is evolving at 20. 25th of July, a new curriculum, exam content online with exam formulation, everything was released. So we have CAPM material that is unbeatable standards. I mean, turnkey content that you can find on anywhere, even on open source markets or whatever it is, you can't get it anywhere. So exclusively available through authorized training partners to our teaming communities. What is in the exam actually? It's 150 questions. So the exam blueprint is marked with 150 questions, three hours exam. If you've never exercised your muscles to stay for three hours, CAPM will start training you so that after CAPM, you go for PMP four hours. That's being gymnastic. So, um, the exam covers four domains, project fundamentals, core concepts, predictive methodologies, agile frameworks, methodologies, business analysis. Whoa, what is interesting here is the fact that business analysis has come in to CAPM. I tell you, I mean, the power of the business analysis is really enormous. Yeah, we'll talk about it much later. Okay, and the exam could be uh, delivered in seven languages. Um, anybody taking French or English or whichever, you don't have a problem. Okay, so let's talk about the PMP. So the PMI CAPM authorized training course is what we have already presented. <clears throat> the PMI authorized PMP certification training program is next. And uh, this course will bring us first hand information about what you will do with your PMP and how you can earn it. What are the requirements? You need a four year degree, a bachelor's degree is good plus 36 months of leading projects, managing projects, they are critical to be reported. So for you to have the eligibility and the criteria for being um, accepted to take the PMP exam or schedule the PMP exam is education requirements, yes. 36 months of leading projects, yes plus 35 hours of project management training. Either you got it through CAPM or you got it by, uh, but the CAPM has a slightly lower content, but it gives you project management knowledge, which is sufficient, but not very, very tuning to take the PMP exam now is now the next thing. So if you have CAPM, at least, I would say you've covered, uh, 60%, eh? you still have 40% to tune towards PMP, yeah.
But then there's an addition in the CAPM, see, which is not in the PMP. You saw the business analysis, right? So that's it. So business analysis framework and practice domains are, are fully presented in the CAPM content. So because CAPM has to build the foundation across, okay? From developing projects, feasibility, business case, business analysis, then moving up to project itself, launching benefits management plans and establishing project plans and understanding the roadmap to getting things done. So that knowledge is provided in the CAPM. So, but the, in fact, that's to say that CAPM is a knowledge certification. Okay. The PMP is a practitioner performance certification. So that's the difference. So it's PMP. Already watched the video here. Good. With the PMP exam, you have three areas of grading and performance domains. You have the people constituting 42%, the process domain, 50% of the exam, business environment domain, 8%, according to the talent triangle. Now, the exam covers agile, predictive, all, like, all types of methodologies. In fact, the PMP is a hybrid certification exam or a certification exam that focuses on embracing all extremes of methodologies or all um yeah extremes because you have to have the predictive you have the adaptive you have the hybrid yeah the exam blueprints 180 questions four hours less by 10 minutes with some scheduled 10 minute breaks, two of them. So you can break it up into 60, 60, 60 questions. Yeah. Multiple choice in nature, also flat with uh, multiple responses, where they can say, choose two questions, two answers, I mean, two options. Matching question set where you can drag one column, uh, a choice, I mean, an option to another column. Hotspot where you can pin a point on a, a graphical point or coordinates and and you know you see the response fill in the blank whatever so fill in the blank is not uh, like you're going to write something no it's just still built on a, an automated process because remember it's computer based uh, scoring what is the content of the PMP as of now? 2023 content. Lesson one, there are six core lesson areas where you have multiple topics under each lesson. So under the business environment, we're going to cover so many topics, foundation, strategic alignment, uh, benefits and value management, and so forth and so forth. Lesson two was starting the project. We understand aspects of initiation to a project. So many topics there. The methodology you're going to put in place, the business case, foundation. Lesson three, plan the project. You will understand all it takes to develop a comprehensive management plan from predictive to adaptive, and then be able to integrate these plans holistically to drive project execution. Lesson three is execution, leading the team to execute the project, measuring performance and closing the project lesson six. Now, lots and lots of things to discuss there with master case studies, okay? And uh, that is it for PMP. We move to another certification that is strongly emergent in industry, the construction professional in built environment projects. The PMI construction professional in built environment projects is a powerful masterpiece for all those in the construction arena. Those in the built environments, they need to take advantage of this certification. 
It is powerful, carrying seven core modules, three micro credentials modules, and one certification overall. See, so we can go into all this now. You said you want it, speak more about it detailly. We know Africa. Africa is the world's focus. Lots of people like Africa now like this because of minerals, resources, so many things. The scramble for Africa makes the West to give us statistics about Africa that we may not even know. We are being informed about our environment. And that calls to mind a very famous uh, business entrepreneur of Africa, um, the CEO of um, Echo Net Wireless, Dr. Strife Masihiwa, is Zimbabwe, who owns a powerful telecom network. And he made a quote that, though it's an infamous quote, but it is very relevant quote, quotation. He said, as a young, as a young person or young African, your future and prosperity lies in how much you know Africa. And the West, they have come out to say, Africa is growing so fast. By 2050, the population of Africa is projected to 2.5 billion. That's more than double. And therefore, massive infrastructure projects, massive economic programs, massive, you know, so projects, investment projects in all dimensions. And Africa is turning to be one of the biggest destinations for development aid projects, right? In the world. So all the statistics is giving us perspective that even to get a C a, a PMI CP that's construction professional is going to leverage on uh, your opportunities of becoming a strong construction consultant for most of these powerful rising projects because. 2.5 billion people will mean that they will need to live in 2.5, I mean, they'll live in homes and want to have built cities. We have, you know, so so many things going on. Let's talk about the other ones, This the, the program management professional. Program management professional is a certification for those who want to validate their competency above the project level to leading multiple projects in a strategic benefits realization approach. That means these multiple projects should um, be managed together so that you can derive benefits, which you can obtain those benefits, except these projects were managed together as a group in the program. So that's program management competence. The portfolio management competence speaks of strategy and the ability to coordinate multiple projects, multiple programs, multiple initiatives and operations together to tie a strategic attainment of organizational objectives. So that's portfolio. Portfolio is very much um, in the area of governance, strategy, alignment, and so forth. Yeah. So you can get into those levels to making to shaping organizational strategy and investment initiatives and value streams. Now, with the risk management professional, it is another very highly elevated senior practitioner level certification. Why? Because risk cuts across all levels from the project, from operations project program, portfolio, and even enterprise levels. So risk is an organization's practice itself. So risk is intensive, it's inherent in every work that we do. In fact, managing any project is about risk. So with risk professional, you will be in charge of governance of risk over projects, programs, portfolios, enterprise, and so forth. So that certification sits you perfectly well to making decisions 
that will enhance opportunity growth for the open organization and equally also mitigate by mitigating re, uh, uh, threats and uh, capitalizing on those factors that will bring value. Yeah. The chances of outcomes, increasing the chances of success, that's it. Now, the PBA is business analysis. It is the practice that precedes project management itself. You cannot be managing a project without understanding the strategic benefits and value of that project. And so business analysis comes in to structure every initiative, validate and justify the investment behind that initiative and give it all it takes to get the results, shaping the st and structuring the outputs for benefits and realization, identifying the benefits, quantifying the benefits, planning, measuring, and uh, obtaining the benefits and transitioning the benefits and sustaining them. So business analysis is like uh, a complement to the PMP to making project success real. So with business analysis, you can as well develop lots of business case, be a, be a, I mean, a project consultant to any level. Yeah, you derive sound business case, sound business judgments. Okay. I think some people are getting interested now. Your questions, your doubts, and your concerns are already <laughs> resolved, maybe. Maybe. All right, ACP is Agile Certified Practitioner. If you want to understand what Agile means, get this certification. You want to understand the rigors, the extent, the length, the height, the, the breadth of Agile practices. ACP will give you all that. That's what they say, Agile Certified Practitioner, because you cover a range of agile principles and methodologies or frameworks like Scrum, Kanban, Lean, Extreme Programming, Test Driven Development, Crystal, and so on and so on. There are more than 50 agile certification uh, frameworks. And Scrum is just one of them. And Scrum has many shades of certifications. Scrum Master, product, Scrum Product Owner, Scrum Developer, Scrum Skills, Scrum. So there's so much about Scrum. And the world is Embracing these things, this best way of working, customer centricity, yeah, it's all about agile, scrum, lean, because you are kind of like optimizing value delivery, delivering in a flexible way, delivering, you know, uh, complex, solving complex problems and also developing complex solutions from complex products. So this is the best way of teams uh, working to creating your ways of working that's it agility being gymnastic that's it so scheduling professional is a traditional certification that helps to know how to develop schedule models for both agile predictive and all kinds of methodologies of work now establishing the, the timely completion of any task or project is critical because there is a time value of money an opportunity strikes always with time timing is critical so you can't just play with time and say and you all all that matters is to release the value to, to finish the project no there is a time the biggest constraint is really schedule i mean the time you must release this because there could be a market window, a market opportunity, or whatever it is that called that project into existence could have been a market window and you must catch up to it. So that constraint is tight, it's tightly too strategic. So that's why there is need for, um, I mean, a standalone practitioner who goes through this education to be able to lead organizational initiatives successfully in the outcomes. All right, so that is it. I would appreciate if you have any questions, we would be responding to you. I'll be responding to the questions and also... Uh, so how do we offer the 
with the, the PMP certification, if that is somebody's interest. But I'd like to hear from you now. If you have any question, fine. We've seen that our training, our training is not just get people certified. No, we, we want to solve the real problems. We re identify the real problems is that we should become capable, proficient. And proficiency is not built in one day. It's not just rushing to cram some few things. And even if you cram them, you know, the PMP exam is not cramming. CAPM, you can cram and make it. Yeah, that's it. PMP, leave it. If you want to work by just cramming, it's not enough. It's not enough. Lots of people with PhDs and doctors and masters in project management, they have taken PMP, thought that it was just another course until the big shocks through one or two or three attempts before their eyes are open to go and study it properly. All right, so PMP is, is one of the gold standard certifications that PMI cherishes and professionals around the world are aiming for PMP, no matter what. Because he, 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 in fact, the latest PMP now is helping transform any kind of work. You know how to work in any environment, with any methodology, with any tool. And you can manage any kind of project, any scale of project with PMP. See, so that's it. And the training for PMP varies for us. We can train people six weeks or one month, six weeks, yeah. That one has a minimal cost consideration, knowing that it's more exam focused, especially for people who have been practicing project management. Some people who have written and written and written studies somewhere, maybe they say they study on their own and so forth, and they didn't make it. They come and they have to take a shorter time to tune properly. And they will be surprised that like somebody went and studied a uh, master's in project management or MBA in project management, they came back and said, okay, um, I just think I will take one week for the PMP. No problem. One week will mean that we should take a full day. Yeah, full day for you to cover it. It's not a joke. Until people sit down, and they know that all the serious content to go through and to master many. We have case studies, eh? master case studies. So now with uh, the one month training, like I said, it's more exam focus. So exam drill. Still, we discuss practical things about the course. There's no way you can train PMP without using scenario-based uh, instructional model. Now, we, we, we can go further to offering the same PMP in millions. Yeah. Why? Because if somebody saw PMP out there, 150,000 even, or 500, well, Anybody can offer PAP, you know, the market is too wide. <laughs> it's too wide. So the only challenge is, what do you want? Will you address your, your concerns? Will you address your needs? That's the point. That's the point. Because the PMP that is for 1 million or 2 million or 3 million can never be the same because of the emphasis and the concerns and the outcomes. All right. Thank you very much. I think we... Uh, wrapping up now, if you have any question, I will be uh, happy to, to answer. Yeah, I have a question, please. Thank you, madam. Yeah, thank you for uh, the presentation. My question is about knowing what is really realistic, maybe based on your experience. Um, for me, I took a one month program um, based on the time that I really want to achieve this goal and also the, the resources available. But I want to be sure that it's a realistic plan, just as you, you said, that it's, it, it's, uh, we should aim at, you know, passing it once. So that's really my objective, but I need to be sure that it's also a realistic uh, decision that I've made. Maybe based on your experience, what can you say about uh, that? Okay. Yes, madam. Thank you. Uh, taking a one month option, you you there's that assurance you will still make it. You make it. We give hundred percent assurance for that for all the parts that you take. If it's for certification, 
fine. But if it's for um to deepen your industry mastery on this subject, right? There's so much to say. And so that's where we we vary the training approach to meet different stakeholder needs. Okay, customer needs people have. Somebody may want to really uh, finish the course and and um, build consultancy knowledge, expertise knowledge. You understand that kind of thing, where you position you uh, miles ahead of somebody that just well got certified. Yeah, but it all everybody meets their objectives through the course. You see, whatever level you enter, you enter. If it's to get certified, that. Um, one month drill will take you through successfully, successfully, I tell you. If it's now to go further, yeah, that's where the price tiers are, you know, appearing there. So at times it's a battle for people to understand because we hardly communicate this very easily in documents, you know, but everything gets uh, ready upon the point of uh, discussion about this. Yeah, so one month is okay, except you want to take three months, which can enrich and relax because, you know, at times uh, risk factors uh, can impact the way you do work. I mean, you carry out something. So if the one month schedule is a little bit too uh, constraining, tight, why not? Loosen it up a bit and enrich it with some uh, three months experience. Yeah. Okay, hope that hope that settles it. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you, madam. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, it's been a participative uh, moment. I didn't hear from Madame Giselle. I heard from uh, I heard a greeting from Madame Mabel, and then Mary Ann. Sir, please one quick question. Thank you, madam. Yeah, what the uh the changes in the project management course now as of maybe the other years? What's the new change that we wow. need to add? Up? Nice question. I think I saw I, I I presented something to you. Let me push it again to the some slides there. Okay, you saw the content of twenty twenty three, right? For example, now uh content of twenty twenty one. This is it here. People. Oh, sorry, this is. Good. Creating a high performing team lesson one, starting the project lesson two, doing the work, keeping the all these ones have been uh, revised to give okay, us so the, 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 yeah, people, okay. business environment. Yes. Now you have those six lesson areas here. Yeah? This one here. Yeah? This is very much updated, honestly. It's like um, I think uh, well, you move from 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 what for first story uh, level to seven story. <laughs> yeah, the the content here is so enriched, and I mean it, it it positions the concepts even far 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 more superlative. It's, it's I mean, so the other one here is whoa, it was just shallow. I tell you, it was kind of like. Okay, now, but with this new content, do we still use the same uh, course, uh, how do no, the no. same material, or there's need for a change in material? Oh, it's it an updated material. Yeah, yes. It's actually exam blueprint. So it means new exam content outlines are published. In fact, PMI updates them every, every now and then. The 2023, first version of 2023 came out in uh, January. And by May, we have an update. You understand? So, yeah. yeah, you need to have new access content, uh, I mean, licensed content. So how do we get the material and all that? Wow, very easy. On registration, and uh, okay. we get your access key. Do you, did you have access key one time? No, I, I had, but there was an issue, so I never accessed it. There was an issue. Then you must have to get one now. See, okay. Once we get you one, we we'll sign you up and you will have access to all the content because uh, your access key gives you uh, access to your personalized uh, student content where you have. Uh, uh, let me just show that to us in case you didn't know. 
uh, where you have all the materials you need for your course. See, okay. all the, 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 the manual, the tutorials, the slides, um, some, I mean, uh, spotlight videos to highlight certain gray areas of the course and assessments and everything that you need, simulators. Yeah. So briefly, that is it. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank I you, Okay, sir. Uh, Thank you. Yes, yes, okay, yes. Well, Just get to Madame, uh, I think Madame Maureen or some of the, they'll be able to help out. Okay, sir. No worries. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. See how it goes this time. I hope something will enter my head. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It will be. Okay, Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Madam Mary Ann, please. Yes, I'm there. I'm listening. Good. We'd like to hear from you. Anyway, it's okay. I'm listening to all what you said. I'm okay. All right. I have Thanks. my kid. I have access to the, I don't think we study material. Okay. And I've been studying. I like that. Just that I cannot download. I don't know why. I can only read online. Uh, maybe you chose the version that is uh, uh, to read. available. Yes. Uh, okay. There is, there is the downloadable version. Yeah. But I don't have access to the download the to the version I can download because this I can only read online. No, no. There is the epop epop version, and there is the because you need to in your access in your dashboard. I think mm -hmm. there are there are many tabs. You understand because they cannot display. Let's, okay. everything in one screen so you need to shift to the next tab and then you see the downloadable version pdf okay 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 i'll check okay no. okay thank you thanks very much have a great uh, weekend it's a longer weekend than usual I'm sure. sir <laughs> yeah a last question please before you go I was just, already just, gone. To know, mm? <laughs> just to know how the classes are going to take place so that we prepare ourselves. Oh, the classes. That's another yes. thing. Um, we have three models for delivery, at least that are more standard. People can choose to come in through a two class evening approach a week. That's say Monday, Tuesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, or that's it. Most people have never really chosen weekends eh? for some reasons. You know, people go for weddings. Some go for whatever it is on Saturday. So, but Saturday used to be one of our major days for training. So now, but the other option is learning through bootcamp. Bootcamp, we we have we, we have two phases. We can we have a bootcamp phase one, which is two days, and then bootcamp phase two, it can happen two days, full two days. Uh like if we have two days yesterday and today then next month will take two days again and in between we have a lot of uh, blended uh, online uh, tutorial sessions where you will to validate and uh, mastery so we, if it's one month fine if it's three months we kind of like still pace it out properly so that we enrich it with the case studies with the uh, you know some people like to take professional internship if it's professional internship for some student level learning we can take three to six months to stretch it out properly. So it's all about meeting the needs of each person. So that's the study approach we have. So you can take evening base uh, two times a week or bootcamp base, which is uh, in space in intervals of one month or so. Or if you like five days marathon, which I think uh, is crazy. Many people have they cannot, you know, they can get drunk on the third day and then they will not be seeing well again. So we don't want that, you know, to compress everything in five days and put in somebody's head. Come on. Even you plant, if you plant, uh, anyway, there are many methods now, artificial ways, where people can plant a seed and, and grow it overnight in three hours. Yeah. There are people that they are already growing tomatoes overnight and go and selling. You plant your tomatoes 7 p.m. by 5 a.m carry to the market. <laughs> so if we want that type, we can still get it done. <laughs> but we had to run that one, okay? We had to run that approach. <laughs> okay.
Madam, are we are you set for which one? Um I will think about it, but I may go for the two days a week. Good. All right, that's fine. Yes. That's yeah. fine. You know, for people who travel out a lot, often they prefer that uh, bootcamp, a uh, phased bootcamp uh, model, which which uh, which is also equally blended because wherever they are, they come back again, bam, and they are done. So now, once they finish the bootcamp, we still give them one month of dedicated uh, coaching, you see, to make sure that they are exam ready. So those are so finishing the, the, the syllabus is one thing, and then aligning towards certification is another thing. So that, those are two things we do. Okay. I think I can disappear now. Thank you very much.